Big shout out to my tier three patrons for making this video possible. I appreciate it very much. If you'd like to get the project files to this tutorial, head over to my Patreon page, link in the video description. And I actually have a tier three seat available. So if you're interested in that, go check it out over on the page. Thanks again. First things first, I need to grab a map of the world. And I'm gonna do that over here at freevectormaps.com. This is a really great resource. In fact, I made a video focusing on 10 different places you can find free maps. I'll link to that video down in the video description. I'm gonna do a keyword search for world, and I'm just gonna go grab something really quickly. I'll grab this one here. Now there's two different options here. If you want to not worry about attribution and use it commercially, you can pay the really, really cheap license fee here, which is $5. And if you want to use it for free, just download it and then you need to apply the attribution here. And if you do that, I suggest you click on this little button here and donate to the website. Okay, you can see there's a bunch of different file formats here. We want to use one of the vector file formats, which includes AI, EPS, or PDF. Now you can use the AI file, which is going to give you a lot of versatility. You'll be able to bring in individual layers of each country but those are a lot of layers and it can be pretty intensive on your system. So I wanna keep it simple. We're just doing one animation of the world and I'm not gonna be really calling out these countries. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this EPS and I already have a map comp set up. This is Ultra HD 4K. So I'm gonna drag my map into here and now you can see it's already scaled all the way up to 100 and it's quite small. So if I scale this up even more, it should still be sharp. This is a vector, right? Now, actually, in fact, it looks quite pixelated. So what you have to do with these vectors is click on this little button right here, which is continuously rasterize. So as you click on that, it's gonna show you the sharp vectory goodness of this particular layer. Now, if you can't see this section or this column, toggle switches and modes here and you'll be able to see it. Now to fit this perfectly, just grab the layer and go to layer transform. And I'm gonna select fit to comp width. If you just select fit to comp, it's gonna squash and squish your layers. You don't wanna do that. Fit to comp width fits it perfectly here. Now I'll grab this, hold shift, and kind of reposition it ever so slightly. Now I'm not really getting an Indiana Jones vibe from this map, so I'm gonna change the color here. So go to Window, select Effects and Presets, and then go to Color Correction, and you'll find Change to Color. And simply drag this, drop it on your map here, and it shows you right here I can change one color to another color. So in the From section, I'm gonna click on the eyedropper tool and just grab this green in here. And then under Two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use like a tan color. So I've actually searched the tan hex code here. I'm gonna copy this and paste it directly in here. That's looking better already. I'm also gonna be throwing some textures and other things over this to change the color even further, but this is a good starting point. All right, I'll go ahead and close this panel. Now I'm ready to start drawing the route here, but the way that I'm gonna have this project set up is that everything's gonna be 3D and I'm gonna be controlling a camera that is flying over. So it's important that as I create all these assets that they are all in 3D and it, it's kind of important that I set them to 3D first because if I don't, if I move some things around and then try to set it to 3D later after I've already set up my camera system, then things can get lost in space here. So I'm gonna go ahead and and click on this little button right here to activate 3D for this layer, and I'm gonna activate 3D for everything I create after this point. So now we wanna draw the route. So I'm gonna click on the pin tool, I'm gonna to turn off the fill here, and I'm gonna turn on the stroke, and we already have this red color here, and now I'm gonna kinda of zoom in on the comp here. I'm not scaling up the layer, I'm just zooming in the comp. And I'm gonna kinda of focus in on where I wanna have my map animation. Now this map is based off of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. They have a map that's going from New York and it goes to like five different locations here, ending up in Venice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly, loosely kind of draw this out right now. So it's gonna go over here, over to the Azores, over here to Lisbon, and then finally to Venice. It doesn't matter that I'm not very precise right now because I'm gonna be able to move these over a little bit later. So now I have this route, I'm gonna call it route. I'm gonna set it to 3D. Now to control these points and to be able to reposition these, I want to have null objects connected to all these points. The other benefit of this is that when I add labels or map markers, I can basically just attach them directly to those nulls and everything will follow the null and it'll be a super nice workflow. So the way to do this is I grab the route and I do a keyword search for path so that I can grab the path here 
And now I need to go to Window and look for this little script down here that comes with Adobe After Effects. It's called Create Nulls from Paths. So click on this. It's going to bring up this panel here. And with this path selected, you have to actually grab the path. Go Points, Follow Nulls. And what that's going to do is going to create basically null objects for every point that you drew out on your path. Now you can see right here, I have these null objects and I can move them around and the paths and the point follows. Now I need to go through here and rename these based on the location. And once again, it's important that all these null objects are set to 3D so that everything here is 3D. All right, so we have a map here, we have this path. Now I'm gonna quickly animate this path. To do that, I'll grab the route and I'll come over here and click on add and then just select trim paths. Now we want this animation to maybe take place over the course of 20 seconds. So I'm gonna to go to the 20 second mark over here and I'm gonna open up trim paths, add a keyframe for end, and then I'll go back to the beginning, maybe a little bit from the beginning here and I'll set that end parameter to zero. And now what that will do is that's gonna give us this little animated path here. Once again, I'm just kind of like mouse wheeling to change the magnification level of the comp here. I'm not moving any of these layers. In fact, I probably wanna lock my world here so I don't accidentally grab it and move it because that would throw everything out of sync here. All right, now I'm ready to add my camera system. And the way that this is gonna work is I want to have another null that is controlling the camera. I don't wanna to have to manually animate the camera flying around. So I'll go to Layer, New, select Null Object, hit Enter to rename it, and I'll call it Camera Control. Once again, very important that I turn 3D on for this layer. Now I'm gonna hit P for Position. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna animate the position of this null to basically show where my camera is gonna follow. So I want it to loosely follow the route here. So I'm gonna bring it over here to the beginning and it's important to place your playhead in the specific parts of the timeline here because I'm animating this over time now. So I wanna go to the beginning and we're gonna go somewhere right around here. Now it's not too important that I get it perfect because I'm gonna to have to tweak these after and it's very easy to tweak. That's the beauty of this workflow is everything is going to be very easy to modify via these nulls. So we'll start here. I'm gonna add a keyframe for position. And now we'll move the playhead out here and just watch where the route is at. So the route's over here. Now I can just grab this null and we'll put it maybe right about here. Now we'll drag the timeline down further to see where this is at. So right about here. Now we wanna grab the null and put it maybe right here. Hello, Jason from the future here. I want to stop you right now. And before you go any further in the tutorial, go up to edit, select preferences, display, and then make sure you have all keyframes selected. This is going to allow you to see your entire motion path. All right, back to the tutorial. And then we'll come to the end here. When we get to Venice, we want the null to be maybe right here. Now, if you look at this null, you can see it's moving along. So we want to make some adjustments here. And the first thing we want to do is we wanna go grab the pin tool, click and hold and select convert vertex tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two middle ones and we wanna smooth these out. And the way that we do that is just click and drag and that's gonna smooth these out quite a bit. So click and drag both of these so that they're smooth, smooth motion. And then for these, you can do kind of the same thing here maybe something like this. And now I'm gonna go down to the timeline and we wanna grab these two middle ones. And what I wanna do here is right click and go rove across time. And what that's gonna allow me to do is it's gonna give me the timing of this is gonna be very smooth and linear. And even if I go down here and grab the beginning keyframe and go to easy ease out, if I want that to smoothly ease out, you'll see that these two keyframes change their timing to reflect that and to keep this all a very steady pace. Even if I go over here to the end keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease in, those come back. So now we should have like a really, really smooth movement here. So this is ready to rock and roll. Now I just need to add a camera. So for that, you go to layer, new camera, and I'll select two node and we're just doing top down here. So I don't need to enable depth of field or anything like that. I'm using a 35 millimeter preset. So to connect this to the null, you simply parent the camera to the camera control and you don't want to connect it to the position, just connect it straight to the camera control. Now the camera is going to fly around and perfectly match that null, which is cool. Now it's just a matter of framing up the camera and I'm going to do that with the camera control tools. 
And that's what all of these are right here. You have an orbit control, which we're not gonna use for this because this is 2D top down. So we're only gonna be using pan and dolly. Now to quickly jump between these tools, you can use keyboard shortcut C. So I'm gonna unlock the world here. If you click on the world layer and I go to dolly, now it's gonna zoom in directly wherever I click here. So we'll go to the beginning here. We need to go to the first keyframe and we're gonna get this framed up with the pan and the dolly tools here something like this and now we have this framed up and it should have a little bit of an animation already set here there we go all right so that's looking really great now if i want to make modifications one of the best ways to do this is to come over here and switch from active camera and go to front and this way you can get like a bird's eye view of what's going on so now if i scroll here you see that this camera layer is flying like this and if i want to move the camera i'm going to hit v for the selection tool and if you grab the camera control null you can see the position animation here so let me just go ahead and turn off the route because you don't want to see that but you can see that if i just grab these keyframes I can move these around and tweak this path ever so slightly if I want to. So you don't want to grab the null here. You want to grab these position keyframes, and that's just going to make your life a little bit easier. And now to jump back, we just go to active camera. You can always actually go to, let me close this panel group over here to make things a little bit easier. You can switch this to two view, and then on one view, you can have front. So over here, I switch this to front, and then this one would be active camera and you can tweak camera control right here. So let's say, you know, the path's quite out of frame here. So if I come back here and I grab that last in, in keyframe, I can reposition it here or move this one, or you can physically bring it back like this or move it, make it a little bit slower. Okay, so I've almost got a completed animation here. Now I wanna go grab a texture that I can plop over this animation. So this is a website called freepick.com. I'm gonna search old paper texture and it shows you right away which ones are free here. Any of the premium ones have the little crown on them. So I'm just gonna go grab maybe this one here and download it. And once again, take note that it says attribution required. So be sure to check out the specifics of that. All right, I've got my texture image inside of my project here. So now I'm gonna drag it and drop it just above the map, but below the route. So I wanna be able to see where to place this. I need to toggle on 3D here so that I can see it in 3D view. And you can see I only need the texture image to kind of cover up this area because we're so close up here. And you can see right now, the basically the resolution is looking pretty terrible and that's because it's scaled way up. So I'm gonna hit S for scale and I'm gonna to start to scale this down and position it so that it's just covering up this particular area so that I'm not like wasting pixels here. Just need to find the size that works. So now we'll bring the playhead to the beginning and see if we still have the texture here. Indeed we do. So now I'm gonna bring this back up above everything else. I'm gonna to toggle switches and modes and I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply. And now we have this texture here and it's looking quite strong. So I'm gonna switch, let's go back to one view and take a look here. And it's looking way, way, way strong. So I'm gonna bring the opacity down, just fade it out ever so slightly. I, actually, this is, this is a really, really strong texture. So now it really depends on how gritty you want it to be. All right, now I'm ready to add some labels. So I'm gonna click on the text tool and I'll click right in here and I'm gonna type in New York and I'll set this text to 3D. Now it sends the, th the 3D text off somewhere crazy. You can see it actually, it's right over here. So to position this right over the New York area, I simply need to parent it to the null object of this path or of the, you remember we created the nulls to follow the points of the path. So now we can connect everything here. To have it automatically snap when I parent it, I just need to hold the shift key. So I'm gonna grab the parent pick whip of the New York text and I'm going to drag it over the New York null and then hold shift as you release it and it'll automatically snap it straight there. So I already have set up the font here. I'm using enter and this is actually looking good already. I've set the kerning and the character size. I just need to right align the paragraph here to set it maybe over here and that's looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and add like a little marker as well. So I'm going to click and hold. We'll grab an ellipse and I'm gonna turn off the stroke and we'll turn on the fill. Pretty sure we're using the same color, might be slightly different. And now what I can do is if I hold shift and double click, it's gonna create a perfectly symmetrical ellipse. 
We'll call this New York marker, set it to 3D, and same deal, it's gonna go crazy, be all big, so all I need to do is hold shift, drop it on New York again, and now I'm going to search for the size parameter, and we wanna bring the size way, way, way down. I'm gonna manually type in something like 25 until we get it. Okay, so we wanna do something like 10, and now just bring it below that text there. And what's cool about this is now when I grab the controller here, if I move it around, you can see that everything follows, the point of the path as well as the label. And now if I want, I can drag these and drop them underneath my texture. So if I want the texture to be applied to these. Now I can just go through and add all the text labels and little map marker icons that I want to all these other locations and just throw in all the final touches. I will also turn on motion blur for everything and go ahead and render this out. If you really wanna make it like an Indiana Jones map, go shoot some footage of yourself or find some stock footage and simply do a composite over it. And there you go.